question reads that uh, many organic compounds such as alcohols, carboxylic acids and esters contain the elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen only. Now there's a compound R and it has the following composition by mass is carbon 60%, hydrogen which is 33%, oxygen which is 26.67% and we are supposed to calculate the empirical formula of compound R. So the first step in finding empirical formula is that you divide, uh, the percentage mass is given, you divide by AR to find the relative moles of all the three substances. So I'm going to do that, uh, carbon's AR is 12, so divide that by 12. Hydrogen's AR is 1 and oxygen is, oxygen's AR is 16. So I'm getting three answers, first 60 divided by 12 is equal to 5, 13.33 divided by the AR of hydrogen is 13.33. And 26.67 divided by 16 is 1.67. Now moving to the second part. The second part is we find the simplest ratio by dividing by the smallest number out of the three. So whole number ratios, we want whole number ratios. So dividing by the smallest, the smallest out of these three values, it's 5, 30.33, 1.67 is 1.67. So I'm going to divide everything by 1.67, so I get a whole number ratio. It's going to be divided by 1.67. This would also be divided by 1.67. So the rounded values that I'm getting is, uh, for this, it's approximately equal to 3. Uh, this one is coming out to be equal to 8, and this is 1. So my empirical formula is going to be carbon. For carbon, it's going to be, uh, they're going to be 3 carbons. Hydrogen, that's going to be 8, 8 hydrogens, and oxygen is going to be 1. So this is going to be my empirical formula, which is C3H8 and O1. Now moving to the next part of the question, uh, we found the empirical formula, which is this one. Uh, now you're given compound S has the empirical formula C2H4O. There's another compound S, and it has a relative molecular mass of 88. Now we are supposed to calculate the molecular formula of S. Now remember one thing, empirical formula is the simplest ratio of all the elements. The molecular mass is coming out to be equal to 88. What you can do is, now uh, it's C2, H4 and O. The first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to figure out what is the mass of the empirical formula. So there are two carbons, so that would be 2 into 12. And there are four hydrogens, so that's 4 into 1 plus there's one oxygen which is equal to 16. The total mass of the empirical formula is coming out to be 16 plus 4, that's 20. 20 plus 24 is going to be equal to 44. So the mass of the empirical formula is coming out to be, it's coming out to be equal to 44. And here's the mass of the molecular formula, which is 88. So if the empirical formula is 44, and your molecular formula has a mass of 88, which means that the molecule actually has twice the number of atoms because if you double 44, it comes out to be equal to 88, which means that the molecule, the actual molecule, is going to have double the amount. It's going to have the same ratio, 2, 4, and 1 ratio, uh, but uh, the actual formula is going to have double the atoms. It's going to be 4 carbons and 8 hydrogens, and they are going to be 2 oxygens. So the molecular formula is going to be C4, H8 and O would be, there would be two oxygens. Now moving to the next part of the question, which is part C. You're now given compounds T and V, and both have the same molecular formula, which is C386 uh, and O2. Now compound T produces bubbles of carbon dioxide gas when it is added to aqueous sodium carbonate. So this is the first hint that is given. It's, uh, it's reacting with sodium carbonate. Now remember, uh, uh, in all of us, we have only studied that uh, acids react with carbonates. So compound T must be an acid. And there's only one acid that we can think of, which is, uh, which ha which is organic, which has carbon in it. And that is going to be a carboxylic acid. So it must be a carboxylic acid. Remember, in organic chemistry, uh, there is only one acid that you study, that's carboxylic acids. So compound T must be an acid because it's reacting with a carbonate. The other information is given about uh, compound V and it is uh, called, it said that it's an ester. 
Uh, the ester function group is it's supposed to have serial bond O and O in the middle. And on both sides, there's going to be a carbon chain. Uh, so we've figured out what T and V are. Uh, let's answer the question. What is the name given to compounds with the same molecular formula but different structures? So one is an ester, one is a carboxylic acid, but they have exactly the same molecular formula. And the name that is given to such compounds, they are called isomers. In the next part, moving to the next part, you're supposed to draw the structures of compound T and V, and you have to show all of the atoms and all of the bonds. So the first part is we have to draw compound T. Remember, there are three carbons, six hydrogens, and two oxygens. So let's draw, I know that T is a carboxylic acid, so let's draw, you have three carbons, I'm going to draw a carboxylic acid, so it's going to be double bond O and OH. Carboxylic acids all have this group. Uh, there would be two hydrogens with this carbon atom, and they are going to be three hydrogens with this carbon atom. So remember the molecular formula was C3, H6 and O2, so let's uh, also confirm that whether it is there, three carbons. Uh, they are two oxygens, and if you count the hydrogens, uh, they are a total of six hydrogens as well. So, so this is going to be compound T. Let's uh, move, uh, draw the structure of compound V, which uh, we've already discussed earlier. Uh, they've already told us that it's an ester. So I'm going to just draw an ester. So when you're drawing an ester, there's going to be a C double bond O and O, and there's going to be carbon chains on both sides of this ester link. So let's uh, put carbons on both sides. So they are three hydrogens with this carbon atom as well. And let's figure out uh, whether the molecular formula is the same. So there are three carbons, one, two, and three carbons. Uh, three hydrogens over here, three hydrogens over here. So that's a total of six hydrogens. And then there are two oxygens. So compound V is, uh, I've also drawn compound V, which is an ester. This over here is an ester link. I'll move to the next part of the question, where you're st it's stated that all compounds with the molecular formula C3H6O2 can undergo complete combustion in an excess of oxygen. And you have to complete the chemical equation for this reaction. So remember, uh, whenever an organic compound combusts, it's reacting with oxygen, which is very obvious. And since it is complete combustion, uh, because you're reacting it with an excess of oxygen, that means carbon dioxide and H2O water molecules are going to be produced. They are always produced when a hydrocarbon uh, also, we can also include oxygen to it. Uh, whenever an organic compound combusts, uh, it's going to produce carbon dioxide and water. The only thing we need to do now is we need to balance this equation. So they are going to be, you always start with the easiest. Carbon is three carbons. There should be three carbons on the other side as well. Then you have hydrogen. There are six hydrogens. So I will multiply water by three so I can have six hydrogens. Now I need to count the number of oxygens. On the right side, there are a total of six oxygens and three oxygens over here. That's a total of nine oxygens. There are two already over here, so I need seven oxygens over here. So I will multiply this by seven by two or 3.5 to get seven oxygens. Now this equation is balanced. Let's just for one more time, we can confirm the oxygens. That this is six oxygens, three oxygens over here. That's a total of nine oxygens. Two oxygens are already over here, so we need seven oxygens. So we need to multiply O2 by 3.5, which is seven by two. Uh, and this would make this a balanced chemical equation. Part D, uh, compound W has the molecular formula C2H6NO. Compound W reacts uh, when heated with ethanoic acid and a cat catalyst to produce a sweet smelling liquid. Remember, in organic chemistry, there was only one sweet smelling uh, liquid that we have studied in O levels and that they're called esters. So an ester is produced. An ester is produced when a carboxylic acid reacts with an alcohol, which means that W must be an alcohol because it's producing an ester with a carboxylic acid. So alcohols combine with carboxylic acids to produce esters. So give the name of the homologous, homologous series to which compound W belongs. So this is, it must be an alcohol because it's producing an ester. And then you have draw the structure of compound W 
and you have to show all the atoms and all the bonds. Now remember, it's a, it's a two carbon atom alcohol, six hydrogens, one oxygen, so it has to be an alcohol. So let's just draw two carbon atoms. It's an alcohol, so there must be an OH group. I have to show all the atoms and all the bonds. Uh, to complete four bonds, carbon would be bonded to two hydrogens. Over here, carbon would be bonded to three hydrogens. So this would be the structure of the alcohol. In the next part, part E of the question, you have alkanes and alkenes are hydrocarbons. So what is meant by the term hydrocarbon? A hydrocarbon, as the term, it's, it's literally defined by the word itself, which is that it contains, it's a molecule that contains hydrogen and carbon only. Moving to the next part, part two of the question, you're being asked in the general form of alkanes. Alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons. They contain single bonds. All carbon and hydrogen atoms are going to have single bonds. Alkenes, on the other hand, are unsaturated hydrocarbons. They contain carbon and hydrogen atoms, but they also contain carbon and carbon double bonds. So the general formula of alkanes is CN, NH, 2N plus 2. And the general formula of alkenes is CN, and H 2N. Now moving to part F of the question, uh, you're given that ethanol can be produced from long chain alkanes as shown. So there's a long chain alkane, it gets converted into ethene first in step one, and then that ethene gets converted to ethanol. Now the question states that describe the two stage manufacture of ethanol from the long chain alkane octane include the name of the type of chemical reactions that occur and the reaction equations and the reaction conditions. Now if you look at step one, step one is long chain alkanes gets broken down into ethene. This is called cracking and since we are, uh, our long chain alkane is octane, CHH18. So we are going to crack uh, octane, uh, just a correction, this is, this is an A. So it's an, it's an octane, octane is an alkane, it's going to be C8H18 according to the general formula which is uh, CNH2N plus 2. I'm, go I'm going to crack it and I'm going to break, break it down into an ethene molecule. So the molecule is broken down into ethene, so there are two ethene molecules C2H4 that are produced and one alkane molecule. So, so a long chain hydrocarbon is broken down into many smaller, smaller molecules. And remember this uh, cracking process is a random process. So uh, ethene is not the only thing that you will get. You can get many different types of products. The conditions that are required for cracking are high temperatures, plus you need a catalyst uh, in the form of aluminum oxide or SiO2. Uh, you can also write pumice or broken pot or uh, zeolite catalyst. Uh, both contain Al2O3 and a mixture of, uh, they're all mixtures of Al2O3 and SiO2. So these are required as catalyst. Uh, so that's the first step. Ethene uh, formed from a long chain hydrocarbon which is broken down into smaller, more useful molecules. So that's the first step. Now this, moving to the second step which is an ethene molecule is converted into an ethanol molecule. So this over here is the addition reaction of ethene uh, where it reacts with a water molecule to produce uh, ethanol. The double bond uh, becomes saturated, it gets converted into a single bond and OH and H are bonded to or get added to the ethene molecule. So ethanol is produced. So this is the reaction and we need to give the conditions. The conditions for this reaction are you need a phosphoric acid HCP4 catalyst plus the temperature that's used is 300 degrees centigrade and uh, the pressure that's uh, used in this reaction it's 60 atmosphere pressure. And this reaction is described as the hydration of ethene or you can also call this uh, uh, addition reaction. So it's, uh, it's also called an addition reaction. So we, we had to uh, name the type of chemical reaction so we have uh, done that. 
So step one and step two, we've described both steps. This is an addition reaction of ethene, and this is where a long chain hydrocarbon or alkane is broken down into smaller molecules.